Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to the contributors meeting. I'm going to be your host today. I'm Leo. Uh, I'm already sharing my screen. And uh, as usual, starting off with uh, triage and discussions. Um, we had for the previous week, Dan and Kate. Um, I see you added a uh, yeah, I some no interest here, Dan. So take it away. So um, 63 new issues, 11 closed, 11 closed uh, that were open this week. And then a total of 85 open issues were updated this week. So that's like kind of our activity level. And 45 issues were either closed in total or closed were updated in this last week. And there are about a thousand stale issues. So these are ones that have no updates in over 180 days. Um, so I think just overall, one thing that I'd like to figure out at some point, I mean, looking at these, most of them are enhancement requests. So I'd like to just start sort of categorizing some of the enhancement requests so that we could actually just say, Hey, everybody seems to have issues with this section of Argo. Maybe we should do take a look at that. So, um, with that, uh, I actually wanted to bring up just Helm and values issues. So I linked, these were all ones that were open this week. Since we added Helm, uh, multi-source, um, et cetera, we've just had a lot of Helm issues. And if I could summarize them, and then I'll go to this random stack trace one that I stuck in there. If I could summarize them all, they're basically all uh, issues that are related to the fact that you're not using Helm natively in Argo CD like you're using it as a just a template and then apply. Um, so these range from uh, multi-source not working quite the way people expect, values files not being applied the way they expect, um, not being able to pass in uh, like values blocks like you might expect, um, errors not necessarily being passed in the most straightforward way. And I think all of these are actually relatively small issues that could be resolved. Um, but I wanted to just get like a feeling if <laughs> I'm like afraid to bring it up. Um, if someone were to make in, it would, it would probably need to be in Argo labs, you know, to start with, but if someone were to make a helm controller that uh, rather than, you know, everything in Argo CD is, is pre-processed and then passed over for application, basically just as a kubectl apply is essentially what's happening. Um, what if we had a Helm controller and you could pick that and all it would basically do is rather than do the config build, it would basically um, just pass it over to the Helm controller. Now, the downside of this is you essentially have two controllers that apply resources now, but the upside is you can basically support a straight up native Helm lifecycle because this controller could basically just, it can do server side lookups, all that stuff. And it would be based on, you know, it'd have to be, um, you'd have to, you'd have to re-implement RBAC there, right? So that it would be obeyed, but, um, or you do it through via impersonation or something, but um if is there is there any interest in something like that or is it just universally a bad idea uh, i just wanted to understand one thing first then uh, you you mentioned a, con a controller when you say controller is because you want this to take care of the whole life cycle of even applying the manifest in the cluster or it could be just uh delegate that to a uh, to a, a more specialized CMP, specialized Helm CM, uh, uh, CMP than what we have natively supported uh, inside our uh, Argo CD. Uh, so I'm trying to understand how is that uh, I was thinking of it as a separate controller, but since you bring it up, yeah, you could technically have it uh, then send what it finish, finishes rendering with server-side lookups to Argo to apply, but... It, you have to implement RBAC there because otherwise Helm lookups could go beyond scope and you were going to create issues that way. Um, the, there's security issues with that. So I actually think it'd probably need to be a separate controller. I would call it Tiller is what I would name it um, just for funsies. But uh, <laughs> but yeah, that's basically, and, and that's, you know, that's why I have some allergic reaction to it as well. But 
thinking about it in terms of, okay, Helm is here. People want to use it. I have a lot of problems with how Helm operates. And we have tried to opinion our way out of Helm issues within Argo CD. But it's like, look, if they if they want to use Helm and they're going to run into issues from Helm, then I would rather they just be dealing with Helm issues and not Argo CD issues. And since we're trying to take all, we're like trying to soften the edges of Helm, it feels like it's a losing battle and um, one that we're always going to be, you know, adding tweaks and things to make it operate more sanely when in reality, it's just be like, yeah, Helm does some stuff that's weird. If you want to use Helm, we're going to let you do that weird stuff. And it's going to be a separate, you know, controller just for Helm. Uh, can I have a question here? Yeah. Um, regarding Helm and plugins, uh, I think most of the use cases are, well, a majority of well, some of the use cases uh, is plugins are being used to handle secrets. It's typically AVP, the uh, vault plugin. Um, would it be possible to do a chain plugin system well, where we are rendering with Helm or customize or whatever, grabbing the output, piping it to the next stage, like plugin that does, you know, some kind of magic, like replacing the secrets and then goes to QCT for applying it. That would, you know, decouple you the Helm. Yeah, you can do that with a uh, CM, with a, like a config management plugin. Like you could have it do secrets look up and shove it into manifest. I know it's more about the chaining. Like it shouldn't be right now. We can't use the integrated helm or uh, customize or whatever. Uh, how do you call these uh, processors? Maybe uh, we have to bake it into the CMP. The CMP does the helm template pipes it uh, into the into our plugin. Then it goes back to Argo CD for applying. The point would be letting Orgo CD to do a Helm sync or customize or whatever it is, then separately doing the plugin syncy based on the previous stages output. That's the input for this stage. And the output of this plugin sync goes to applying. I think your PR Gurgly is actually the first step towards that, basically sharing information between sources. It gets a little bit dicey because then you have to resolve uh, dependencies in that chain. Um, but the, the first thing is just sharing some information. I think your PR starts that. Um, might be. Yeah. I think it would be pretty neat because some of these stages are not linked together in their mechanics. They are pretty much decoupled doing independent things, but we can't have them as you know separate mechanics change together and working together right now. And that complicates plugin management. We have to do a separate plugin definition for every use case that we are having. And this yeah. kind of complicates the deployment of the whole internal mechanics that we are ending up with. I don't I don't think doing a server-side controller for Helm would solve your issue um, unless you could resolve it using native Helm stuff. Because that's really what I'm talking about is just mm -hmm. basically just having a full-on native Helm support um, you know, separate controller that you could install that would uh, essentially allow Argo CD to pass that stuff through and then apply our back from Argo CD. Yeah, I was saying this the relation that you said that a bunch of issues uh, got open due to the recent Helm change, the multiple sources, and these are, well, things with Helm. And uh, when I check some of these, these are related to plugins usually, and people wanted to do things that the new thing weren't able to. And there are a couple of new issues opened. Personally, I think it's an interesting idea, uh, but I think at this point we would need a proposal to really understand uh, the use cases itself and uh, how we would deal with uh, security. That would be great to have a proposal for that. Um, but uh, yeah, sounds like an interesting the chaining process of uh, uh, generating manifests sounds. Uh, interesting at first to me at least okay so maybe, maybe can... two proposals here yeah uh, are you familiar with the proposal uh process that we have uh i'm not sure not how to pronounce yet, it but i can read up on it okay cool uh can i gergely am Gerge. i pronounced sorry Gerge. but whatever Gerge. way i'm listening Gerge. okay <laughs> yeah I'll, I'll try my best thank you um all right uh, so 
yeah yeah if there's cool. if there's no more if you have any other thoughts about the idea of a helm controller please ping me and if you think it's a terrible idea i'd love to hear you tell me that it's a terrible idea because i feel like it's a bad idea but i also yeah feel related like to that i guess the the, the way i think the, the the way i understand now is if you want to have that controller then i guess my question is why are you using argo cd at all right so what is what is the what what is the benefit of using argo cd if you have a controller that takes care of everything so it's just for using the ui um uh, i think it's both the ui you can still have uh automatic reconciliation as michael's pointed out you can still do post sync you know stuff um it doesn't have to all be on helm hooks um also diffing diffing is a big deal and i think that's something that would have to be tackled so to, so it would be respected um, because that's something that you can't do natively with Helm. You can't do like a diff and ignore differences. And that's something that I think we could implement. Um, so anyway, I'll uh, I'll put, I'll, I have a little write-up. I'll share it with a few people and then I'll put it up um, for people to beat up. I think it would have to be an Argo Labs project to start with because there's just so many issues to tackle. Um, but that's it for the Helm, Helm stuff. Uh, one other thing I wanted to bring up from the issue triage was this random stack trace. Um, this is something I haven't seen before. Maybe you guys have seen it, but it basically, they got an error that said, ah, go make an issue. And I looked at the issue and I thought, I have no idea what's going on here. And um, so I don't know if somebody else makes sense of this or, uh, um, or you know, I figure since we have something in the plat pro uh, project that actually tells people to make an issue that we should do something about it, but, um, it Which one are you talking to? Uh, talking uh, about? Random stack trace. It's the third bullet point down under issue triage. One, two, four, five, six, up, 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 up. Those, those are all Helm values issues that I are summary. So just above that, that one. This is a general issue with how we display stack traces in the UI. They're just, when, when an error occurs that we don't handle, we just chuck the stack trace into the UI and say, figure it out. So is it, I mean, is there is there request essentially that it just be a nice looking error? Because I didn't see anything here that I thought I could debug. Like it just seemed like, okay like something random happened. I don't know why. I guess, so they click on a resource that failed. It's not clear to me where they did that click. So we could probably reproduce the issue by doing a sync, causing it to fail, clicking on whatever they clicked on um, to get this error. And then we could look at, you know, network tools or whatever to figure out why the stack trace appeared. But I think we need more information to actually reproduce this because I don't know what they're clicking on. <laughs> All right, I'll just ask him for more information in the meantime. So he's saying, the person is saying, click on the resource that failed and then provides a link and then it has a stack trace. I don't remember having this behavior. Yeah. Kind of looks like they're clicking on the node in the tree. So the server could not find the requested resource means the CRD doesn't exist on the destination cluster. So that's easy to reproduce. And then, yeah, I think they're just clicking on the node for that resource in the in the tree. Mm -hmm. So we could probably reproduce this actually. I think there's enough info. Mm -hmm. So it's probably related to error handling of missing CRDs. Yeah, that's kind of how it feels. Okay. So uh, how do we want to proceed with that? Anything to add in the ticket? Suggest with my earlier. Okay, you, you added a comment. Yeah. Okay. I think at least that's a direction to go in. And uh, if anybody wants to work on it, they can. Okay. All right. Thanks, Dan. Uh, anything else for uh, triage? Hey, Leo. Um, it's Keith. I was secondary. I have yes. a couple points I want to bring up. Um, uh, yeah, the one issue that I saw appears to be a regression. I'll just put it here in the chat. 
um, 12.404. Um, it looks like it was discussed already on Slack by Michael. And so, I, yeah, I just want to bring this up for everyone's awareness. And the other one I wanted to bring up is this one, 12.376. I'll put it in the chat as well. <clears throat> um, yeah, so this one appears to me to be a bug in the, in the deletion order uh, based on the expected behavior. And so I want to bring this up so that maybe someone who is more familiar with the sync waves behavior can confirm that it is indeed a bug and maybe um, have a look at it, eyeball it and make a comment in there. And um, another one was that there was a UI crash um, and caused by the ongoing top bar redesign, but I fixed that. So yeah. Um, yeah, it's just three points for the, for this week. And, uh, yeah, that's it for me. Okay. So the next step for those, those, those tickets, is it handled, uh, Kate, uh, not sure. Uh, it is something we discussed, uh, briefly in the, in the, um, containers meeting to make it more, uh, to, to clarify the, the 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 steps that is required for the triage, I think today is really really open, and um, yeah, so we need to better define what what should be done uh, during triage. Um, but for now, I guess what we need is uh, to define a direction for for the open open tickets yes. that was brought to attention. So, what is the direction you suggest for those? Oh, I, I just want this one for this one. I just want to make sure that this is uh, indeed a, an issue, um, because yeah, I, I I didn't have any comments. I didn't add any comments to the, to the issue, but I thought that it, it it seemed like a bug. But I just want somebody to confirm. That's all. Okay. Like, yeah, it doesn't have to be fixed right now, but I just want somebody to- Yeah, yeah, through. it's just the next steps, how to yeah, how we handle that, steps. right? So it doesn't stay there forever in the limbo. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, right. Thanks, Kate. Um, okay. Uh, is it done for triage? Yes. Thanks, Dan. Thanks, Kate, for um, for for the previous week work. Uh, now we need to uh, collect the, the 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 next person. Uh, any volunteers? If not. We're going in the list down in the list. So May, I don't think May is here. I don't see her. Um, John, John Pittman, not here. Pasha, no. Jan, yeah, it's not here. Daniel, Surfer. no. Okay, oh. Simplify I myself as a <laughs> primary and any volunteers for secondary. I'll take secondary, Leo. Uh Justin, thanks a lot, Justin. I'll find you. Ah, here. Thank you. All right, with that out of the way, let's go with the with the topics that we have. Let me just see my time. Okay, we have two minutes. Um, yeah, we have quite a few topics, so if uh, you can, uh, um, yeah, be careful with not taking a lot of time. Uh, we have a lot of uh, a lot of uh, topics to cover. So starting with you, uh, Gergel, Gergel, Gergely, <laughs> go for it. Ah, uh, you're muted.
Uh, it's still no good. I think it was a hardware issue. Because you were you were off mute, we just couldn't hear you. Oh yeah, sorry. Uh, yes. Now I can hear you. Hardware yes. got muted, so far I'm muted on this versa. <laughs> <laughs> yes, go ahead. Thank you. Uh, so the DCY link is also connected to the multi-source doesn't work with CMP issue. Um, and I get a PR on the way fixing it uh, with the help of Michael. He's been helping uh, a lot uh, since the past few days. Thank you very much, Michael. And I would really prefer to have it a candidate for 2.7. Um, and I'm looking for approvers for it. And Michael said it doesn't fit anymore in his time. He's overburdened. And I would be really happy to have someone to review it when it's done. It doesn't seem to be a big change, by the way. I checked the source. It's not a biggie. I just have to extend the CRDs that's already on the way and uh, at the copying logic. So it's not rocket science. I can summarize the change in sort of Argo CDE language for folks. Um, so right now with multi-sources, the only connection we provide between two sources is for one Helm chart uh, to pull a values file from a different Git repo. Uh, so that that's done literally just by path substitution. You're only allowed to access that one file in the other repo. This change would be to basically create a new directory for both of the sources um, and let them basically access each other's files as one. It, I think it would open up a lot of possibilities um, for combining different uh, rendering tools. Um, so I think it'd be really powerful, but it's going to be a non-trivial PR. Um, it may not be too bad, but it will be non-trivial and it'll take some time to review. So I can't review it for 2.7. If someone else can, then great. Jenna? Uh, I can review, but um, I can just, I'm just a review, so. Thank you very much. Is, um, is there a PR open for this? Yes, it's uh, linked in this very issue, I think. Um, a bit upwards, downwards. Yeah, it's um, quite a big discussion. Uh, this? Yes. Yes, that's one. That's the one. Draft PR. Okay. Uh, and the PR uh, is implementing everything, or there is still. No, uh, it's absolutely not everything. I'm at the point of modifying the CRDs. And I'm running into issues with the protofy regenerations. Uh, the how do you call it? The generate proto what's name thing is failing, and I'm investigating it with, with Michael. Yeah, I, I can help with that. I've already gotten past a couple of errors in code gen, so I'll I'll talk with you there. Thank you very much. Um, I. I would like to have two more questions uh, slightly connected. One is uh, the contribution log I notice said, I need to use my uh, sign of email as my primary one on my GitHub account. And the corporate guy says that you wouldn't be able to make a difference between any of the email addresses unless it's also authenticated. And why is that particular requirement? Because our uh, internal corporate requirement regarding our account setups are slightly different. Where you see this requirement exactly, so we know exactly what you're talking contributing about. Contributing MD, I think it was. Uh, where's this file linked? It was governance. Uh, We can, you, you can ping us on on a Slack and we can... Uh, yeah, we can that's, that was the other question. How can I get access to the Slack? Because uh, I wasn't able to register. It's CNCF Slack. It's open. It's uh, you, just, uh, you just follow the procedure there and you're going to be... Uh, I clicked on the link and trying to sign up and said that our corporate domain wasn't allowed in, just the two listed. Is, is your... Is your company blocking the 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 access or no? Uh, where is the where is your Slack link? I right Slack channel, and when I'm 
uh, creating an account, I'm being told that you can use uh, any accounts with the domain refe.co and huey.com. That's strange. Um, can you try maybe using your personal account? I, I try. Just, okay. It got rejected. Uh, strange. I'm able to. I, I never heard of a blog. It's a cloud-native.slack.com workspace. Let me check. Slack dot cncf dot io. Okay. Uh, the different one got link. Okay. Uh, could you please share I, that? Yeah. Yes. Let me share in the Zoom chat. Okay. That's it. Thank you very much. No problem. Thank you. Okay, let's move forward. Uh, anything else uh, uh, from you, Gerda? You're muted again. I... Okay, let's move. Uh, Justin, uh, open SSF scorecard. There's a PR open. Um, you want to mention anything about it? Go for it. Yeah, can you? Can you do me a favor and just pull it up? Um, unfortunately, I'm not able to share a screen at this time. Sure, no problem. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to discuss um, adding another badge on our main README. Um, this is a newer card, and currently they're scanning over a million repositories, and it's public data. Um, adding this badge would include us. Currently, Argo CD has a score of 8.7, which is really, really good. That's outstanding. Um, I didn't put all our other sister projects in there. Um, out of all the graduated projects, there's only two projects currently using this. I believe it's etcd and tough. Um, what this PR would do is add the badge to our readme, and then also it adds a workflow, which scans during uh, push to the master branch, so it updates our score regularly. Um, so I just wanted to discuss it with the maintainers and see if they're okay with adding this. I know we have quite a few badges, but basically it checks for security, make it sure we're doing a proper security. Okay. And it just, it basically just shows we're doing really good. <laughs> if you click on it, does it show the badge? Um, no. You can... Go to, let me send the link. There's a- Oh, there it is. There's there's there. one There's one on the top of here. It just says open up. Yeah, yeah, there. It's real small. It just shows our score on it. This one? Yep, that's it. And then the best then, practices? Yeah. What about that one? Uh, we, we currently yeah. have best practices. This is built upon that to actually improve even more. Um, and with the PR, where, where it runs the workflow, it's actually for the approvers, they're gonna see in the security tab, uh, remediation steps on how to improve our score. Um, one of the few things we need to do is maybe pin some dependencies in our Docker file. Um, there is one thing currently broken in their scorecard and that's the fuzzing check. Um, we do do fuzzing, but it doesn't detect us doing fuzzing because it's listed as the main Argo project repository, not each individual repository. I'm actually going to open an issue with them on that. But our score is pretty outstanding. And I think it shows how well the community and the maintainers have taken care of the project. I'm not opposed to that by any means. <laughs> uh, yeah, no. But we can we can send that in the, in the proper, uh, we have an internal Slack uh, channel the we can send the message there see if anyone is opposed uh, I, I don't think okay. it, i don't think it will be the case but uh then we we just merge a pr but it sounds pretty yeah. nice pretty cool yeah real real simple small cool thanks a lot justin yeah no uh, problem and you, you have another one yeah i just pushed this one last night i've been working hard on this um, during the release process with this PR, we will now be generating attestations and a true providence. 
So users can verify that the when they download the image, they can use admission controllers, they can integrate it into their CI CD process and actually verify these images were built by us on GitHub using our workflows and not by anything else. Um, I not going to do a demo on it today. I can do that. It, that would take actually quite a bit of time, but I did want to discuss a few changes that I made on this. Um, the main one currently right now, when we push a release, we're pushing to Quay and uh, Docker Hub. I did not include Docker Hub on this. I can. Do we? Do you know if we still want to push to Docker Hub? There was a reason for that. I discussed that in the past. I don't recall. Do you remember, Michael? We discussed that, right? Over the way limit, right? The way limit in Docker Hub. Sorry? The way limit, like, you know, the number of holes, the way, the way, uh, way limit. I think there's an issue with uh, Docker Hub in general. Right? Okay. 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 I'll just go ahead and add that back in then if that's the, that's sounds good to me. It's, Real easy. Cool. Well, that was my main lot. question. Any more? Any more questions uh, related to that? Uh, yeah. I'm just going to ask: Would it be easy to replicate this to rollouts, Justin, as well? That's how I designed this. Yes, it will be. Okay. Cool. Um, I created a reusable workflow, which you'll be, which I'll help you implement it. Of course, cool. I'm actually going to hope, hopefully, help all the sister projects implement this. That'd be great. That's awesome. Thank you. Yeah, you got it, buddy. Thanks a lot, Justin. Awesome work. No problem. Um, cool. Right. So let's move ahead with Blake. Uh, Blake is bringing up the topic. Uh, PR backlog is starting to get big. Is there anything that we can do on that front? So Blake, you wanna <clears throat> start that discussion? Yeah, sure. Uh, well, as you guys can see, there's 342 open PRs on the RCD repo. And I mean, when, I mean, I try to triage, but as I mean, I get the general feeling that one, there's a lot of backlog where there's a, there's, I guess uh, there's some self-interest there where some of my own peers haven't been <laughs> looked at. I understand the, I understand why, but then I also get the general feeling that uh, there's a lot of, I mean, I see lately like a lot of like, shall I say low quality PRs coming in. It's like, you know, like fixes, which don't really fix anything or, and, or they don't have any descriptions. And then the question is like, like in terms of triaging, is there some, Kind of process to do, or is there some is some there's something where we can just be ruthless to be like, okay, this is, is not good enough close, or is there something other means we can move forward? Uh, I mean, and for bigger PRs as well, of course, where there would also need to be some kind of triage. And I, mean, I try to, try, there, I mean, there's a, there uh, there's a lot. <laughs> I mean, just looking at it, it just gives me uh, gives uh, yeah, uh, I have words. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this is something that is being discussed. Uh, so in the last uh, maintainers meeting, this is a topic that was discussed. And uh, well, we have a few suggestions. One, uh, implement a bot to, to help us with that. Second, uh, to clarify the, the steps required for the person doing triage to, um, to proceed with uh, at least giving some directions in the open PRs for the week. Um, so those are suggestions that were there, but we still need to spend time to put those things in place and document properly. Um, that's where we currently are. This is, again, this is something that we are discussing. I'm not sure if someone wants to add something to the discussion. Feel free to do. Um, the numbers are kind of interesting at the bottom because the green bars um, show the gap between the number of PRs opened versus PRs reviewed. And even though, like you can see in the bottom graph uh, in yellow, we're doing a pretty good job of increasing the number of reviews that we approve and get merged, um, the gap is still growing. And I agree, there are a lot of low quality PRs, but even the low quality ones, like they claim to fix something. So the amount of time required to figure out what they're claiming to fix and trying to reproduce what they're claiming to fix and then seeing if they actually fixed it before closing the PR as, as useless, that's still a lot of time. 
Yeah, that's what I was getting at. And because there's a lot of things where, I mean, I guess like my spider sense would be like, okay, close. This is not really very useful. Of course, don't want to be mean or, or anything about it. But then, the, but then there is a lot of time consumption. So I mean, I'm not a fan of bots either, for probably for the same reasons you, Michael. But nonetheless, I mean, that's uh, having a lot of PRs open is yeah the, the, it's growing and that's not going to get better if something doesn't happen which i don't know what to be fair i think it's going to get significantly worse reviews submitted over the past six months um i average per quarter four times as many reviews as the next highest reviewer that's out of people who are designated uh approver and up the people who are necessary to actually get the prs in I've got internal stuff at Intuit. It's going to take more of my time over the next quarter or two. Um, so this, the number of open PRs is only going to increase if we don't get more approvers looking at things and getting them merged or closed. Yeah, we need to 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 to, to continue that discussion and and uh, have some action items for sure. Uh, really decide uh, about the bot. I'm not necessarily against it as long as it's uh, it's helping us and well configured and not discarding good work from uh, from our uh, contributors. So yeah, I think all that needs to be uh, uh, we have uh, 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 again a discussion in place and uh, we just need to to move forward with that and come on, come up with some action items. Oh, sounds good. So, okay. Thank you. Anything else uh, regarding um, triage, PRs? All right. Okay. So, and this concludes the agenda for today. Uh, does anyone have a last minute topic you want to discuss? We have six minutes. All right. So we're uh, Michael replied to you, Gargley, uh, to the link you posted. Um, yeah, yeah, my experience, the DCO check is happy just as long as there's an email there that's associated with your account. But I could be wrong. We can sort yeah. the DCO check if it gives you fits, though. It was just strange because right. I don't think it makes sense requiring the primary. Yeah, I'll take a look at the, at the contributing uh, markdown. I, I I know that this is not a, a, a real requirement. We, you can use uh, an email as long as, as Michael said, is uh, signed off. Uh, okay. That's that's the only requirement that we that we have. I remember okay. there being some issue where I there was someone who who signed with the wrong email, and then they basically had to rewrite the signed off. I, I can see if I can take it up. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, every single commit in the PR has to be signed off. If one of them is missing, it ruins the whole entire PR. Exactly, yeah. I think the Ilya, first one wasn't signed off. I tried to amend it, and, well, I hope I succeeded with pushing the amend. Yeah, you have to amend, and the amend needs to add the, the sign off comment in the in the in the comment message. So that's it. Yeah, I, I try to do that. I hope the well, it got amended on server side as well because it was already pushed. Okay. Is there um, if I so, sorry, are you guys done with that point about the amending? I think so. Yeah, go ahead. Um. Some of these PRs are like pretty simple. Like there's one about upgrading the kubectl version from 2.3 to 2.4, which I feel like is uncontroversial and like, okay, I can just approve that. I'm not an approver, but um, if, uh, is there a way to tag an issue is like, like, it, like tagging a PR is like, this is kind of uncontroversial or like, uh, I expect this is an easy one. So that it makes but it easier for people to tag tag with what? So, so what are you what well, is so I I'm not an approver, right? right? So I I'm looking at this one. I would approve it. I'll do I'm a reviewer, so I would review it and give an approve right. on it. Um, right. but 
there are ones that require like, oh, this is actually changing more complex stuff. This is needs a lot more opinion. For the ones that are easy, um, is there a way to label it as like, this is like a dead simple one. Like they're fixing some documentation. This is like a super simple, you know. Exactly. That would be great. That would be great to, to have something like that. I know Kubernetes folks, they use uh, some some bots to help with that. Uh, yeah. The, right. The so is, yes. Blake, Blake tags them ready to review. So if you click the links in the Zoom chat right now, those contain all of them that should be pretty easy to review. I did that on rollouts for a long time before I had approver status. I would tag ready for review when I looked over them. Mm, okay. So just throw the label on it. Yep. Yeah. But then it's it's up to one of us who can. You can see there are a ton of them with ready to review on them right now. Like us approvers have to actually go look at them then. And that's the part that's not happening right now. Not at the rate that it needs to. Yeah, it, it depends on how the label sends the notification, right? The bot might send a notification in a easier way for us to track the label. I had a past experience with GitHub's uh, notifications, so um, not always easy to to track everything from GitHub because it's a lot. So yeah, maybe we can uh, improve that for sure and make. Uh, make it more evident for all the provers and maintainers um, whenever something is is uh, is necessary right is necessary to 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 spend some attention on it so yeah is there is there a label like that that's like um that's i feel like it's a grading system you know it's like easy change medium change hard change so I know a lot of projects, I don't think it's based on complexity per se, but they'll do small, medium, large, extra large. Like I know Kubernetes has them as well. I think bots just do it based on line count, which isn't necessarily great for complexity, um, but it's just something I've seen in the past. I've seen auto, small, medium, large, Excel labels get added to PRs. I don't know if something exists out there already that can just do that with some thresholds, but... Yeah, yeah. I, I I guess my complaint is about the notification system. The the label is fine, but uh, it, I I found hard to configure my account to receive notifications when specific labels are added to. So there's I'm not aware of a good yeah. GitHub I don't think right. Yeah, I don't think labels can trigger notifications. Yeah. So that's that's the problem. So you have to keep searching and and querying. Um, all issues with that label. So it's you have to proactively go and 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 search instead of getting notified, right? So that's the that's the difference. And there there are nine active approvers on Argo CD, and if not getting notified when a PR is marked ready to review is actually keeping people from going through and reviewing and approving PRs, then we should probably build some automation. But my sense is. Out of the nine people who are who are reviewing, I'm not sure that that's going to make a dent. I think that the time spent building the tool is probably going to be, you know, better spent actually just reviewing the PRs. Oh, I, I'm not saying building any tool. There's uh, things already there available to use. So, yeah. But again, uh, let's discuss and let's uh, let's see how can we improve that. Um, and there are other discussions in, in, in place. So um, let's wrap up everything. And I think, uh, yeah, for sure, we need to improve that. We can't leave with that uh, uh, super huge number of PRs that keep increasing. Uh, it's not good for the project, not good, not good for the community. All right. So, yes, go ahead. I know we're short on time. Can I mention something real quick? Yes. Um, on the attestation PR, um, there was one possible breaking change as far as the release assets go. They are now coming to compressed format. Should we post something on Slack and let people know, or what do you think the what comes compressed? Is? What exactly is going to be compressed? The CLI binaries before they come in a 
compressed format now instead of just the raw bar binary. Hmm. Okay. I know some some people may have CI CI CD systems that automatically just pull it. You know? Yeah, exactly. So we're yeah. gonna break them. Yeah, this is some sort of an API breaking change. We we could. I mean, your your release work is pretty big. Um, maybe we don't yeah. carry pick it back, and we just release it on two point seven. I'm perfectly fine with that. Why is it a requirement? It's a two second. Um, because it's using Go Releaser to actually generate uh, the binaries and how it archives them. It wants to compress them. I can work on. I know they do have a binary format where it'll release, but I believe it breaks something else that it uses. But I'll look into it. Okay. It, it's preferable if it's uh, published as yeah. a binary. Okay. Shouldn't I be a problem. So too. Okay. All right. Okay, okay cool. Sounds so good. we are uh, a few minutes out of time. Uh, thanks a lot for, for the participation, everyone. And uh, see you again uh, next week. Have a great rest of your day. Bye. Thanks.